Mitt Romney wins the Iowa caucus by just eight votes as Rick Santorum surges to the top of the pack. And focus turns back to Europe as Italy's biggest bank, Unicredit, will sell 7.5 billion euros worth of shares at a 43% discount at Tuesday's closing price as it desperately tries to raise cash. U.S. futures are flat headed into the open. I'm Alex Steele and the morning call starts right now. Good morning, I'm Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Alex Dew with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. So Scott, we have futures kind of bumpy starting out today. How are you reading this? Is this a pause after Tuesday's rally? Are we looking at some profit taking mixed in with that strong buying that we saw yesterday? Or are we setting ourselves up here for another leg down? I don't think we're setting up for another leg down, but I do think a flat open is actually healthy. Yesterday we had that gap and go type of scenario, and depending where you were in your positions, you were very upset. If you tried to buy, like just say that the spiders and the S&P, you had no follow through on the day. But if you positioned in the banks, they had follow through. If you found some individual tech names, they opened up and they were still buyable. So it was a very selective type tape. But sometimes it's hard to see when you have such a big gap up. So on a day like today, mm -hmm. where the futures are somewhat flat, A, you want to see yesterday's gap hold or a portion of it to show the short term bullish nature. But when a tape is relatively flat, you could see standouts. You could see relative strength in stocks, so traders could start to go to them. You could see also relative weakness, stocks not acting as well. That could be shorted. And there are a lot more things to do, and sometimes you could see them a little bit better when the tape's not just going straight up. So before we get to the individual stocks, let's just go to the chart very quickly to see what that support is and what that gap is you want to hold. Okay, well, first things first, just real quickly on, on the SPX, you will see not a bad move. Okay, take a look at the chart, looking good, looking like it's on its way. This was the October low, the November low, the December low, and we broke this downtrend. And yesterday, we broke above this mini flag pattern, and we paused in front of that, just say, 1292. Today, what I'm going to do is with the spiders, okay, if you look, it's a little bit of a different story where you opened up, and by the end of the day, you know, it didn't close so well. So take a look here. This is what I'm going to use as a gauge. I'm going to use yesterday's low. Yesterday's low is 127.43. I am long some, and I'm going to stay the course. If you could see a pull in to maybe right around this area, which is around 127 or 126.50, I think it'll be viable. But I want to see some of this, this demand, some of this gap hold in order to keep the momentum intact for them. What could be a move above yesterday's high to then eventually test the highs here from back in October, which was 129.42. So that's how I'm going to. Segmented. And if we don't hold that gap, and you mentioned that's a possible shorting opportunity. Now, yesterday you were long, say, the you know, Google, Bank of America, JP Morgan, um, Apple. So then would you be looking to short those names if we don't hold that gap? Or are you looking for other opportunities or are traders looking for other opportunities? Well, it was different. Everyone came in with like a different strategy. And yesterday, that, you know, we, we gapped up. And off the bat, you saw some relative weakness in some of the bigger names from last year that sometimes they take profit with. So some guys actually made money, you know, short, just say, McDonald's and MA, besides buying some of the weaker groups that had some continuation. So I think, right. I think the bullish case is going to continue. I'm not looking to get net short the indices for now. I'm going to be looking to buy dips and be very flexible and just trade around positions, trade around the Apple, trade around the Google. Yes, it was a great day in the banks. I'm not expecting another great day in the banks today, but if they could hold in and reset up, they can continue higher, so they're worth holding. So you have to figure out your time frame. I do think a lot of scenarios are still worth holding, and there will be some tradable moves to grab intraday over the next few days. So let's look at one of the sectors that was sort of beaten up in 2011 that did really well yesterday. You know, basic materials had that big jump from the China's PMI coming in over that 50 level. Did you trade this group at all yesterday? And that can go from, you know, the ags to the metals and miners. I did not. But a lot of people were talking about how the ags were up on their highs. Some of them were up like 4%. So if the, you know, the stocks are up 4% and the spiders were not even up 2%, they were showing some relative strength. I heard guys talking about FCX and mm -hmm. X. Mm -hmm. They were actually strong. They closed near the highs. So that laggard group that people were talking about, the investment thesis for this year, you know, got a pop. And I think that can continue, but it's going to be, you know, on an individual basis. All right, so let's look at some of the names to see if it's sort of, you know, a one-pop wonder or if there's <laughs> actual strength there because the weaknesses and the worries that came in 2011 of a global slowdown isn't going away. It's not like that was erased yesterday. So in particular, let's start with uh, Freeport and, Ste and, and X, which is U.S. Steel, because those are very levered to, say, China. They're levered to the world economy, slowing, recession in Europe. Uh, what kind of strength are you seeing in those stocks? I, I saw two tradable patterns, and I think there is some room to continue. First, 
in FCX. If you take a look here, look at this wedge pattern that's just started to get moving yesterday. I do think that there is room, and I think it'll be nice for the market if this can get up to 44.29. So just say today, if it opens down, you know, and it starts trading through yesterday's high of 29, you know, uh, 39.74, that's when traders will add to continue for a move to go to just say this area. As far as U.S. Steel, a little different. I talked about this stock. Um, at the end of December saying it should be on the radar as a January effect type play. Still in this overall range, same type of scenario, traders might add above yesterday's high, but really it's going to have to clear this just a 29.50 area, and if it does, you could see a move into the, the low to mid 30s where the major moving average is coming down to. So I think both of these have opportunities for the first and second quarter of this year. And in terms of Freeport, uh, yesterday we saw the workers in Indonesia, the Grassberg mine, actually go back to work after that three month strike. So I wondered if part of that pop was also just sort of removing that overhang. Did you hear traders talking about that at all? No, but they're looking at the action, but that could have been what's behind the action. So for every fundamental story or every technical move, sometimes there's something fundamentally well. And if, you know, if that, that was lifted, I'm sure it was very helpful. And it would have been nice to know because it could have given traders more conviction if they knew what was going on behind right. the scenes. Okay, so let's go to then some of the ags to see how they're held up. So we got some uh, d downgrades and upgrades today. City upgrading CF to buy and downgrading Mosaic to neutral. Potash also was removed off of a conviction buy list. So uh, let's look at these stocks in particular CF. Does that have more room or are there just a lot of overhangs here? I think someone must have known <laughs> that, yeah. that it was getting yesterday. upgraded to yesterday mm -hmm. because you know the move was pretty potent compared to the other one. So if you look here on CF you will see you know stock had a, a nice move yesterday. It took back its moving average. I do think it can continue. It has room to about 170 where it'll meet a, a major downtrend. So if you did buy it yesterday or you want to trail it, I think it could hit this area before you have to so reevaluate. So you don't want to be lightening up at all just to sort of take advantage of that 6% move? It depends if you know if you have a, a short or midterm time frame. I think at this point, you know, keep more on because it does have easier room. Once you meet the resistance, then you you take back to maybe mm -hmm. a tier one if you have a longer term outlook for the entire year with that stock. Now potash didn't hold up as well though. No, potash has been weaker. Mosaic's been weaker. You know, POT. If you take a look here, it's at the bottom end of this range. It did clear this little mighty you know downtrend. So I guess. You know, being at the bottom of the barrel here was downgraded. But it, I think this also, if the group stays strong, people will forget a little bit of the downgrade, and it could be a trade up to 46, 48. But I don't think it's going to get up and go and start taking out bigger resistance like it used to do back in the day. So this is like a bottom feeding trade just for, you know, a little bit of a move. It's interesting. We were talking before we got on camera, though, that as the trade for the ags, they haven't been holding up really well. But if you talk to the guys like, a, like Jill from Options Profits, who loves this sector for 2012, the fundamentals still look really good. Corn prices are over $5 a barrel. Farmers are making more money. They're going to go buy fertilizer. Very basic supply and demand story there. So it. So when the fundamental thesis catches up, you'll see a, a technical like igniting bar. So and if you have some trouble, you know, figuring out which ag you want to go with, there is an ETF that doesn't give you as much bang for the buck, but a little mm -hmm. safety just in case one pre-announces a downgrade if you're not seeing it. So if you look here at the MOO, I think you know if you're not that sophisticated, just go with this one. Nice little pattern here just broke above this downtrend. You know, you could buy it below this 48.65, and I do think the ags stay intact. You could see the resistance here that was put in place around 52. So if you want exposure to the group and you don't want to pick individual names, I would buy the MOO, and hopefully it, you know, it goes sideways and holds this gap for continuation. I just want to finish very quickly looking at the chart of Mosaic. It's reporting this morning before the bell. We were hoping to get it before the show, but we didn't. So we want to look at the chart to look at what levels we're going to be checking out. It was down 30% in 2011, has run 4% into earnings. Now they pre-announced some stuff. This is it's now a fiscal second quarter. It's reporting. It announced it's going to cut back its finished phosphate production by about 250,000 tons. So I don't know if expectations are that awesome, but the right. stock did run yesterday. Well, on that bad news, I remember the whole group gapped down mm -hmm. and went positive. So that was a good trade for traders. Probably a little frustrating for investors. If you look at the chart here, though, at this pattern, you know, people aren't expecting much. It's at the bottom end of the range. It's not even at this level of resistance or up back where it was over the summer. So if the earnings are okay, I think it gets above this 53.50. If it could hold it, you know, then that'll be a, a decent move for Mosaic. And then it could retest the 60 area, which is the next point of reference. So here's your new pivot point around 53.50.54. All right, and we'll be right back talking about the financials, the other sector that did really well on Tuesday right after this. So stay with us. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman, CEO of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. 
To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side. Here we go, breaking it up with financials here. Now, Scott, we had an RBC Capital Analyst coming out yesterday saying that bank stocks could rise about 20 to 25% in 2012. Want to get to the names. I know you were trading uh, J.P. Morgan long, but Wells Fargo has really been outperforming this stock as J.P. Morgan sort of labeled the best in breed, but perhaps Wells Fargo has now taken that title over. Well, you can't trade them all, and I like to pick one or two and then trade one. So I went with J.P. Morgan and Bank of America, believe it or not, and I trade Goldman, but I think that Wells Fargo, I, I just missed it, but this one is acting better. If you look here at the chart of Wells Fargo, see where it is, look how it's already cleared all of this major, major resistance. So this stock is acting strong for this group, and the next point of reference here is up to about uh, 2950 So as far as like the big banks, this is acting best because when you look at JP Morgan, I like the pattern there, and it was good to hold yesterday, and it was even viable, but it still hasn't even cleared this whole bottom end of um, you know, resistance. So if you look closer here, you will see there was a nice little tradable level above 34. The next area to look at would be around this 37. So I'm going to stay with it. I had a lot more size on yesterday. I did sell some at the end of the day, but I will stay with some. And maybe if it holds and goes sideways, I'll add above yesterday's high for a continuation move. So you think that Wells Fargo momentum is done right now? You think you totally missed it? There's not that extra room? No, well, if the banks continue, because this was only day one of the year, it's probably going to be the first one at new highs, and it's going to continue. So Wells Fargo does look like best in breed. And, and if there's a tradable pattern, I might go to it, but you can't trade everything. So if you want to trade the banks, you trade two of them. Maybe pick between Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan. You know, and then pick a, a different one, maybe a regional or maybe even Goldman Sachs. Right. But right now, Goldman Sachs is lagging a bit. Right. I was going to say, because one of the reasons why Wells Fargo has done so well is because it's really gotten control of its mortgage portfolio. So if you check that with like a Bank of America that's still just getting dragged underwater by a countrywide, right. you wonder how Bank of America is actually going to wind up kept playing catch up. Well, it, it probably won't. But to be honest, Bank of America percentage wise has more risk, but there's more reward. Like Bank of America could go from to say six to eight this year, which would be a nice percentage. I'm not sure if Wells Fargo will have that same percentage, mm -hmm. but you have to be more of a market timer because you know the Wells Fargo investor who's been there for a while, you know, they're not as underwater. So it, it's also it's it's where it's where you stand. And as far as if you want to hold something a little bit longer term with less risk, I would definitely go with Wells Fargo over a Bank of America. And then very quickly want to go to Goldman Sachs of five percent yesterday. You said that maybe there's some catch up here. What's that resistance that really needs to clear? Guys on my floor, they traded that yesterday, and there was actually intraday. There was an intraday move to, to catch. So if you look here at Goldman Sachs, you will see that it finally had you know a, a decent move. I think guys were buying it maybe around 94, and then when it cleared 95, it had a decent move. It actually went as high as almost uh, I think 96.50. You know, I do think that clearing this little hurdle here was good for Goldman Sachs, and if it could get above yesterday's high, I think it could at least try and fill this gap. You know, for a trade back to about 100, 101. Then at some point, if the banks really get going, you know, maybe it could break this little downtrend and, and, and see perhaps the highs that were just put back in October, which look far away. But in actuality, if they get, you know, a little fire comes in on Goldman Sachs, this would be you know, resistance one and this would be your resistance two. All right, let's get to some quick ways to make some cash. Now, Scott, you were long Google, Apple yesterday. They both did well, but it seemed like Google really had that extra juice and Apple kind of floundered a little bit. Was that your experience as a trader? And yes, what are you well, doing today? Well, uh, Google at this point right now is short-term extended. If you only trade stocks for a week to two weeks, you know, I think selling in this area makes sense considering it's $30 above the buy price that we gave you at, at six, like 35. But if you're a long-term investor and if you sell it here and won't get back in, just continue to hold it. My price target is above 750 and I think that's realistic for the year. So it all depends where you want to be. What about Apple? Apple um, was a nice tradable move into that gap. I do think that it's going to take earnings. So if you hold through earnings, you know, with mm -hmm. Apple, that's going to be the catalyst for new highs as far as a trade. I think guys took off a little bit as it filled some of that gap to 412 and a half. Which is why it didn't so, really extend further. Yeah. But if, if it gets a little stronger today and gets over yesterday's high, you know, they'll probably add some to fill that 415. But it's had a big run. At this point, I would say Apple stay, stay the course. But, you know, some of the the gains already out of the way short term. All right, let's go to Caterpillar because that was up 3%, kind of piggybacking on our uh, basic materials theme. Um, is there a trade here? It's still in that, back, that box type pattern and I see a lot of resistance. I have to just quickly show you the chart. If it can clear it, 
it'll be very healthy, but it's still in this overall channel. It's got to get above this 98 to get frisky to get to, you know, that 105. And then speaking of the stocks that did well, let's look at the two that didn't do so well. <laughs> uh, McDonald's and MasterCard, they had been great performers in 2011. And my argument was, well, isn't this the time then when we're seeing this rotation out of those stocks into the cyclicals to take advantage and do the opposite and take advantage of the decline to buy the McDonald's and buy the, the I'd say the Colgate's and then buy the, what's the other stock here, MasterCard, <laughs> to, to, because we know that the European issues aren't over. Well, it, it, all, it all depends. You never really want to do it on a, on a day one. You know, mm -hmm. these days to take notice, you have to see what they amount to. And yesterday, McDonald's had a, a pretty potent down day. I think guys actually saw relative weakness in McDonald's, you know, early in the day when the futures were going. It paused, and so did MA. I think they were almost negative. Well, they, you know, the indices weren't even in their gap. So it was a good cash flow short. So great long last year, good cash flow short today. This potent, you know, day just took out these, this five-day move. So I wouldn't be rushing just yet. I would watch this area right here around 98.21. And if this doesn't hold, I think for an investor, I'd rather see you buy the dip around 95.43, which is the 50-day. So the idea of the trade is good, just not the levels. Yeah, it's day yeah. one. So, you know, wait maybe day three, day four. And talking about day one, let's go to day two of gold <laughs> because it had now a solid two-day rally. It was up 2%, almost 2% yesterday. Um, okay, back over 1,600. What are you doing? What's the level of support you're going to be watching to make sure it holds? I, I haven't done anything the past few days, mm. but I've been talking about it a lot. I did the day that it broke down. We, we caught a nice short in silver, and some guys on my floor caught it in gold. Then Thursday on street signs, I was like, you know what? Bulls and bears make money. Pigs get slaughtered. I saw some capitulation. I'd say cover your gold, you know, to, just to take the trade. And, you know, I think Brian was like, you know, should you be buying it here? I was like, I'm like, I'm not, but for a trade, maybe. But I think that you'll be getting a better entry at some point in, in 2012. So unless you're looking, you know, to get involved in, and you don't mind a little bit of a dip, that's fine. But if you look at the three-day move here, you just had the oversold bounce, and now it's going to be a lot tougher for gold to go. Here you go. You have one, two, three into these moving averages. If guys did cover that short on this reversal day, which would have been great, which we tried to say. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, they might be looking at 157.55 to potentially short some, you know, or maybe if they really you know, push the envelope, there's a big gap here that the bears might try and defend around 161. And in terms of the spot price, we're really looking at 16.25 is that sort of uh, resistance level that a lot of traders I know are watching saying, well, once it gets over that, then I'll have more conviction. And just keep in mind that it is tracking stocks, it is tracking the euro, and it's inverse to the dollar. So that's sort of, you know, it's just you going along for the ride. <laughs> yeah, you have to look at a lot if you're going to be trading gold. Yeah, all right, good stuff. So that's it for us for today. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy trading. I'm Alex Steele from The Street. And I'm Scott Redler. Make sure to follow us. If you didn't know, we have a virtual trade floor. We have a chat room with, with a few hundred people in there. I can't say the exact amount that are looking for ideas and are helping everyone alongside. We're also on the radio. We talk. We throw out relative strength, relative weakness. So there is you know, a place to go intraday if you're looking to have your hand held to watch the trading action and stay involved. Thank <laughs> you.